In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the use and setup of the Renov Solo Ballistic Calculator. So I've got a brand new unit here, just mounted it on this gun, and I'm going to go through all the information that you need to enter into it to get it to calculate your ballistic solutions. Now the information you're going to need to know in order to enter it into this information is all your ballistic variable information. So things like your muzzle velocity and your bullets BC, the length of the bullet, all information you're going to need to know. So have that written down and, and ready when you start this process. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the unit. And you can see that it looks like it's set up in yards already. It's in mode 2. And then the wind information up in the upper right hand corner is showing a 3 o'clock wind left to right with a zero value in miles per hour. And then where it outputs the solution here, it looks like it's giving the solution in mils, which we're going to change. I've got a MOA scope on here, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll over till that ML is highlighted. And I'm going to go up to MA, which would be MOA. And I'm going to continue on to the, the next one. The top one is elevation. The bottom one is windage. I'm um, going to go up again to MA. And now we're in the right units for this scope. So first thing I'm going to do now is go into the, the menu mode. So I'm going to hold the power button down and it goes into the configuration. And the first item on the configuration is the weapons. I'm going to go down, highlight that, hit the power button. And now this is where we're going to enter in all that information. So the first thing it asks for is twist rate in inches. So I'm going to highlight where those dashes are, hit the power button to select, and then I'm going to arrow over to the left side of the decimal and go down one to nine. The twist on this rifle, by the way, it's a seven rem mag with a nine twist barrel. So nine is the twist I need. Then I'm going to hit the power button to unselect that field and go down to the next one. The next one is twist direction. This is a right hand twist barrel, which is the default. The caliber in inches is the next item. Hit the select, and it's 284, so I'm going to arrow up to 4, go left, arrow down to 8, go left, arrow up to 284. Hit the select button, down to the next one, BC. Uh, the bullet that I'm shooting through this gun right now is a 168 grain burger. So the G1BC here is 0.617. So we'll go down to 7, go over to the left, go up 1, over to the left, down to 6. Select. Weight is 168. So I'm going to go over to the left side of the decimal, go down to 8 left down to six left and up one 168 down to the next one bullet length this one you can either measure a bullet or you can go to there's a few websites out there that have databases anyway that information whether you get it off a database or you measure it just make sure you have it at the ready. Now, what happened was is this: these units have an automatic off feature, so it, it saves battery life. And if you have too long of an inactivity period, it automatically turns off. So that's what's happened, and we're going to have to start at the beginning again here. So turn it on, hold the menu button in, again go down to weapon, select, and then we're back where we were. I just have to scroll down to that length, bullet length. Anyway, for that 168 burger, the accepted length off a database is 1.445. So I'm going to go in and enter in that. one point four four five okay it's select I'm gonna go down to the next one this is the reticle for this one I have a MOA reticle in this scope 
So I'm going to select that and I'm going to scroll through until you get MA. MA is, is MOA and there's also ML which would be mil. So if you have a mil scope, you would enter that in. And then I'm going to go back to MOA. That's what I want. Select down to the next one. Scope height. This scope, this would be your center line of scope to center line of bore distance. So you want to have a caliper to measure that. This particular gun is 1.9. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in 1.9 inches. The next one is scope offset. Um, in this case, this, this scope is mounted directly above the bore line, so there is no offset. So zero is the the value I want to have in there. Okay, now this is your click values. So we're going to tell the scope, tell the com ballistic computer that the, the click values for this scope are quarter MOA, both in elevation and windage. Now, when you enter this in, you want to do your values first before you enter in the, the actual value because if you enter in a value and then change the unit, it'll automatically convert the value and you'll end up having to redo the value. So I'm going to change this from mil to minute. And then I'm going to go to the left and put in 4.00 clicks per minute. So that would be a quarter of a minute, four clicks per minute of angle. And then I'm going to do the same thing for wind. Change the unit first. And then the value will be the same, four clicks per minute. Okay. The next thing on my list is my muzzle velocity. Now this should be something that you actually measure with a chronograph. And when you do this measurement, you want to also keep track of how far away the chronograph is from your muzzle. because so That'll be a, another item we enter in down the line here. But our muzzle velocity for this rifle is 3120. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. Thirty-one twenty. Muzzle velocity correction. Now what this is, I want to be careful not to let this go past the, the time, so I'm going to constantly be changing this here. But to, just to explain what this, is, this information is, is if you have the data of how your muzzle velocity is affected by temperature, this would be the place to put it in. So if you know your muzzle velocity is 3,200 at 80 degrees and 3,100 at 30 degrees, you can enter in your degrees per, or I mean, I'm sorry, your feet per second per degree value in here. And then when it measures temperature, it'll automatically correct your muzzle velocity based on the temperature that it's measuring. So you can tell that this unit's, both of these and the Eagle are extremely sophisticated uh, ballistic calculators that really take into account every possible variable for giving you the most accurate solutions. Anyway, getting back to this one, we don't have that much data on this gun yet, so I'm just going to leave this as zero for now, but once we get more information on this, we will be able to enter that in and, and get more accurate solutions. Okay, so leaving that one at zero... Now I'm going to chronograph distance. This is what I was telling you before where you need to know how far the muzzle is from your chronograph. In this case, we are at 7 feet. I'm going to go ahead and enter in 7 feet. Elevation add. Uh, what this feature allows you to do is have your solutions given to you from a dial-up that you've already made. So, for example... If you have a normally have a 200 yard zero, but you're out on a prairie dog town or something, and all the dogs you're shooting are already 500 yards away, so you've dialed for a 500 yard shot, but now you're thinking about making a shot at 600, 
Well, if you have this set up for your correction at 500 already, this tells you only the addition will come up above 500 to get to 600. Okay, so that's what elevation add is. And it also has a unit in there. If I ever use this, I would be doing it in minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and change the unit value to MOA, but I'm going to leave the value at zero. Okay, and then I'm going to scroll down the range. Now what this is, is actually your zero range. So this gun, we've got zeroed at 200 yards. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in 200 yards. Okay, the temperature. This was the temperature at which you zeroed the rifle. Not the current temperature, but the temperature at zero. And on this particular gun, it was zeroed at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in 65 okay then ballist the barometric pressure is the next one by the way if you've got this unit set up when you go to the range you can get all this information off the unit it's just that when you go in to enter it in you'll want to make sure that you you've got the information that it measured and not the the current measurement okay so the barometric pressure on the day we did it was 28.83. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. 28.83. The humidity values, but you can see 1 to 30 is what it's defaulting to. And it looks like what I went with was the 40 to 60. Now if you know there's a, a particular humid day when you did your zero you could pick a higher value if it was a particularly dry day you could pick a lower value but I'm just gonna go with the 40 to 60 so it's the middle of the road relative humidity okay and then I'm gonna go to the bearing this is the direction that you zeroed the rifle and when we did this our range where we zeroed it was pointing due west so I need to enter in 270 degrees Okay, there's the 270 degrees and then the last one I believe yes this is the last uh, variable to enter is your latitude and the latitude where we have our range is about 45.8 degrees north so I'm going to go ahead and enter that forty five point eight degrees north okay that's everything on this menu so two options we can do is scroll all the way to the top to that little H with the house around it that would take us to the home screen or you can just hold the power button in and it takes us back to the configuration menu so weapon is where we just were now we're gonna go down to environment now what the environment is is the information that is for the solution that you're trying to calculate so in other words this is the information that you want to enter in when you're trying to make the shot so going through the list here the first thing is humidity again it's the same range value so I'm gonna default this to the center of the of the range again so 40 to 60 Okay, again, if it's a particularly humid day or a dry day, or if you have some other kind of measuring device that can measure relative humidity, you can enter in what the actual value is for the most accuracy. Okay, the next thing is temperature. Now, this unit is actually measuring the temperature. So this is a field that you don't need to mess with. It changes automatically for what the temperature is. Same with barometric pressure, which it's measuring right now to be 28.70. Now, so if you were looking to enter in your zero information on that previous menu, the weapon menu, this is how you could get it. Go into this screen, see what the temperature it is that it's measuring, and the barometric pressure that it's measuring, and now you have those values. Okay, latitude and bearing. These are used for, mainly for Coriolis correction. So it really only comes into play if you're trying to make a shot beyond a thousand yards. 
Um, if you're just trying to make a you know a four or five hundred yard shot in a hunting situation or something like that, you wouldn't have to go in and change these values in order to get an accurate enough correction to make a hit. So again, I'm going to hold this button in to get to the main configuration menu again. Scroll down to the next one. So now we've done weapon and environment mode. Okay, now what the mode does is I need to talk about this a little bit. So we'll let this thing die before we hit it again. And uh, what the modes are, there's multiple different modes you can use. And the first mode is working with military laser rangefinders, and it, it really doesn't have anything to do with the solo unit. So we're going to skip over mode one. Mode two is where it measures the slope and the cant, so both the up and down hill angle and the tilting side to side angle. And then you enter in mill dot ranging info to get a range estimation. Okay, mode three again measures the slope and cant, and then you enter the distance to the target via line of sight distance that you measure with a laser rangefinder, for example. So this is going to be the mode you use probably most often. If you have a laser rangefinder, it's the most accurate range you can get. So you would measure it, enter in that range, and get the ballistic solution. Uh, mode four, user enters slope and mill dot ranging info. And mode five, you enter slope and distance to target. So rather than having the unit measure the slope, you're measuring that with some other device and, and entering it that way. So, like I said, three is the one we're going to use most commonly. So let's turn this unit back on again. You can see this number right here is the mode that it's in, which is two. So we're definitely going to change that. I'm going to hold the button in, get to the menu again. I'm going to scroll down to mode, select that. And then I'm going to go down select and then go up to three hit select measure slope and distance to target okay go ahead and hit select and i'm going to go up to home hit that now we're back to the home screen and you can see that there's a three there now so we're in mode three which is the mode we want to be in okay Next thing, oops, I kind of went into the measurement screen. So I'm just going to very quickly uh, go down to the solution, get back to the main screen again. Okay. All right. I am going to hold the power button down. Go down. That was mode. The next one on here is system. So this is just some of the system parameters. Um, first thing on here is auto off. So it's set at 30 seconds. This is that battery save feature that comes in. So if it has any inactivity for 30 seconds, it automatically turns off. Okay, the next thing down the list, and you can adjust that. If you want it to have a longer time, go ahead and have a longer time. Okay, delay time. This is how long it delays after you enter into a measurement mode where it's measuring the slope and can't. So that's like what I did when I first turned the unit on and I only hit the button once quick. It went into that measurement mode where it's measuring the slope and the can't and then it asked for your distance to the target and then you hit the solution button and it calculates the solution. So this is where you set how long there's a delay time while it's taking that measurement before you can then enter in the distance to the target. So it defaults to three seconds. I'll leave it where it is. Background is blue. Brightness is 16. Battery life 43%. There's a serial number and a version. Obviously those are not editable fields. Pretty much just system information. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold the power button down and go back to the configuration menu. And we'll go down to the next one, which is ratio setup. What this is, is if you plan on using uh, the reticle for doing range estimation, this will allow you to set up 
with basically any reticle a means of doing some range estimation. So it's not a bad idea to go ahead and set this up in case you your laser rangefinder batteries die or something like that. So what you do with this is you'll go through the list of things in here and fill them in and it determines then a ratio for doing calculations using your reticle. So what you do is you have a known target size, so whatever it is in inches, and a known distance. So let's say we set a 10 inch target up at 50 yards. Then you're going to enter in 50 yard range, object size 10 inches. The division is your scope division. So let's say you've got just a regular duplex reticle. You can measure from your crosshair up to where the, the crosshair gets fat on your duplex. And you're going to bracket your object of known size in there. And so your division will be one division where the crosshair gets fat. Okay, and then you're going to put the magnification on your scope where that bracket fits exactly that object. And then it'll calculate your ratio automatically. And then when you're doing further range estimation in the future, you would just enter in how many of those scope divisions you're measuring for an object of known size and it'll tell you how far away it is then. So that's pretty much how that works. Okay, the auto off feature just kicked on again, so we can go ahead and go to the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the configuration menu, scroll down. The last item on here is calibration. Now this is calibrating the slope and cant measuring devices. So what you're going to want to do when you do this calibration is make sure that your scope, your rifle and scope are level in both slope and cant and then you hit the calibration and it zeroes those out. So that's how it knows where those zeros are. Now when you're out in the field measuring and you're pointing at a target uphill, it'll be able to measure that angle and include that in the calculations for your ballistic solution. Okay, that's pretty much all the menu features of the Solo. Let's actually go through what we would do if we're going to make a shot then. Okay, so we're going to get behind the gun and we're going to get it on target. And once we're on target, you can see from the home screen there's a yards, the mode, the wind, and the solution. So once I'm on target and I'm ready to start doing my measurements, I'm going to hit the power button. One quick shot. Now here's where it's measuring that slope and cant. Okay, now this, it hasn't been calibrated for this gun because I don't have any levels handy or anything, but it's saying that it's uh, plus 1.5 degrees and the cant is plus 3.2 degrees. Okay, so now I would enter in the yards that I'm measuring with my laser rangefinder. So let's say it's 800 yards away. Hit the power button, it stops flashing. Scroll over to the right and down to solutions and hit the power button. Okay, it then calculates that my elevation is 14.04 minutes and there's those values for, for the slope and cant in degrees. So it's two degrees up and three degrees canted. And the wind value is a negative 1.3 minutes. So my wind values in here are a zero mile per hour. So basically for that 800 yard shot, it's saying we've got 1.3 minutes of spin drift and Coriolis effect basically that uh, are causing me to have to go to the left 1.3 minutes. Okay, so if you have a wind correction that you want to add in, so let's say we've got a left to right wind, the wind's going to 3 o'clock, and we measure it at, say, 7 miles an hour. Okay, I'm going to go to the wind value, and I'm going to enter in 7 miles per hour. So you can enter in wind values in any integer mile per hour value. Okay, now it's got negative 4.01 minutes for that 7 mile an hour. And let's say instead of it being straight on left and right, it's angling in and going to 4 o'clock. All you got to do is change it like that. The arrow changes to show you the wind is going towards the 4 o'clock. 
and you can set these wind direction values to any value on a clock face, so 12 different values. So you can scroll this all the way through. 12 o'clock would be a tailwind. 6 o'clock would be a headwind. And see all how the corrections change based on what the wind value is. And I believe you can even change if you have a, a device that's measuring your wind and something else. It looks like they got meters per second, feet per second, and miles per hour. Miles per hour is what my wind meter reads, so I'm going to leave it at miles per hour. But there you have the, the setup and use of the Renov Solo Ballistic Calculator. You can see it's a pretty sophisticated unit. This particular unit is really set up for a one-gun application. You can't have multiple weapons saved in here, which is why it's called the Solo. And completely self-contained, submersible waterproof, so completely weatherproof. Really a fantastic little unit that keeps small, keeps a small footprint and allows you to just mount it on the gun and always have it available to you. And fairly reasonable cost too. I think these units come in with a mount somewhere around $270. So fantastic option for, for really sophisticated ballistic calculator.